Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I was tagged by the fabulous Kate Slotover at the Book Review podcast, and it was on Instagram, but I thought this is a good excuse to do a video. So it is the 54321. I've forgotten the name of the tag, but the first prompt is five books that you have loved recently. So I tried to keep this to 2024 because the 2023 books I've done a best of, we did the podcast episode and so on, but uh, it was hard to find five books that I've really loved already in as we record it's late January so there are a couple of 2023 reads here but The Librarianist by Patrick DeWitt which I really enjoyed it's very witty and but also quite poignant a story about Bob Comet a retired librarian or librarianist um, really recommend that one that's Patrick DeWitt and West Heart Kill by Dan McDorman which is a, a murder mystery and it includes notes on the history of crime writing, but in a really fun way, not in a nerdy, well, it's nerdy, but I love it, but not, um, it doesn't bog down the story. And it's set in a hunting club. It's, it's a twist on the, on the genre. So a, a fresh take, and I really enjoyed that. I thought it was fun, but also well executed. So West Heart Kill, speaking of crime, To Love and Be Wise by Josephine Tay. I've never read Josephine Tay before, but she was in the era of Agatha Christie and Dorothy L. Sayers and Nio Marsh and Marjorie Allingham. And I really enjoyed this. It has a detective who is warm and compassionate and intelligent and fun to be in. It's just fun being in his company. Great characters set in a small village in England and really well written. Great sense of humour sort of underlying it, but a good mystery as well. And it felt really modern. So I recommend that one if you haven't tried. Josephine Tay, very different genre. SPQR, A History of Ancient Rome by Mary Beard. I thought this was excellent and so engaging given the subject ancient history, which often can feel quite remote and hard to grapple with and can be quite dry. So she does it so well. She obviously has this extensive knowledge of her area and it's up to date. So they're still finding, which I find quite interesting, archeologists are still finding new things about ancient Rome. They're still making discoveries. So this one is quite up to date and uh, really easy to read. It is still, I still do find it hard to get into ancient history as much as I want to. So I think if you enjoy ancient Rome, ancient Greece, you'll like it even more than I did. But I thought she did a great job. I love Mary Beard's writing. So that's SPQR. And finally, I had to cheat just to bring, you know, to make it five books. So Home Reading Service by Fabio Morabito translated by Curtis Bauer, which I'm still reading. So I can't say I have loved but I, I'm loving it so far and I will be talking about this with Sean Mooney on Sean the Book Maniac and I really can't wait for that so I'm interested to see what Sean thinks of it. I'm early days so this could turn out to be not a book that I've loved but at the moment really enjoying it and I, I needed five so there we are we've got five home reading service and four auto buy authors. So this was really fun. And Kate in her response said she doesn't auto buy because if she loves an author, then she gets too worried that she'll be disappointed by the other books, which I can understand. Um, but I'm actually the opposite. I, I have the non auto buy for authors. I, if I haven't liked one of their books, I, I find it hard to then commit the time to buy another one of their books knowing that I didn't like the other one so I'm which which is you'd like to be more open-minded wouldn't you but I'm a bit the opposite in that way Haruki Murakami is one of mine and this is his I think my favorite of his The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami and this one was translated by Jay Rubin um, back in the day so I really I don't always love all of his work he's slightly sexist uh, I think and just you know he's a man of his time he's a bit older that sounds terrible doesn't it but he is and he's been questioned about that by Miyako Kawakami a fabulous young Japanese writer but I still just really enjoy a lot of his novels not necessarily always the short stories 
So anything new of his, I will still buy and I find him really interesting. I love his nonfiction as well. So that's one, Haruki Murakami. Another one that has sort of snuck up as an auto buy is Sigrid Nunez. And it's not that I have many of her books. I have The Friend and uh, What Are You Going Through? And The Vulnerables is her latest, which I haven't read yet. But Clara from Colour Me Lovely really recommended it late last year and knowing that I really enjoyed her other two books and they're just so precise and thoughtful and really delightful to read um, and thought provoking as well I thought yes I will I will it's it's automatic I don't you don't have to persuade me I'm in for Sigrid Nunes so whether that's an auto buy for every single book maybe it is we'll see if I like the vulnerables and another one that again has snuck up on me S.A. Cosby I think the late I think Razor Blade Tears is the latest and there's Blacktop Wasteland and I think there's a third one that I've got as well just excellent crime and really intelligent but pacey and really well written again with a sense of humor but authentic and of its place and time and I just adore his writing and so it, it yeah auto buy definitely when he has a new one out I will get it and another one and this is hardly qualifying as an auto buy but Claire Keegan I picked this up yesterday at Imprint's bookstore it's only this big it's tiny in fact it's probably not even 50 pages I would say let's have a look oh it is yeah, 45 pages, um, but and I've only read small things like these and I still need to read Foster, which everyone raves about as well. But this um, small things like these I thought was excellent. And because her books are short, well, the ones that I am that I know about are really short, it's very easy to make them an auto buy because it's not a huge commitment of time. So, um, so late in the day, I haven't read yet, but I don't think it will take long and I'll report back on that one. Three genres that I love, literary fiction, crime fiction, well, any, you know, any genres really, fiction or non-fiction. Um, travel memoir is another one. So to give you an example of what I mean by travel memoir, these aren't travel necessarily, but Olivia Lang, The Trip to Echo Springs, which is not a memoir, but she combines memoir of her own experience with this story of authors who had issues with alcohol and you you follow them through their journeys deborah levy real estate again it's a memoir but it's also reflections on writing which makes it really interesting and she just writes so cleanly she's almost an auto buy as well to be honest hisham matar a month in siena which is a memoir but it also has it's about uh, literally his uh, month he spent in Siena, but it's about the Sienese art school, which is really interesting that I hadn't read about before, but also reflecting on his father's disappearance. And he had written a book about that as well, but this one was even more moving, strangely. So, and again, not too long, but just a, a different take on a memoir. It takes you to the place. You feel like you're in Siena with him and he's wonderful company. Oren Pamuk on Istanbul, which is his home city. And he writes so beautifully about the melancholy of the sense of melancholy of the place of Istanbul, the history of it and the, the places where he spent his childhood and teenage years. And it's just, it, it's also him as a writer and there's so much in it. So I love memoirs where there's uh, another element to it, I think. And then really lots, most, most fiction, I'm not a big fan science fiction or fantasy reader but apart from that all my and I don't read much YA or any YA let's face it um, but almost anything else two favorite places to read I don't have particular favorite places to read I do enjoy reading on our uh, front veranda if it's a nice evening which really, you know, I really am sitting out there reading, but it's a lovely place to read. And, you know, at the beach house, anywhere on holidays is nice to read. I'm, I'm not fussy about where I read, really, just whenever I have the chance. And one book I'm looking forward to, The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepherd Robinson, which was recommended on a podcast, and I received this as a Christmas gift. Really excited to read it. It sounds like a sweeping tale that I can just immerse myself in and it's about it's set in Cornwall about a fortune telling family and I think it's historical it's a yeah set in the Georgian splendor of Bath 
and her fortune telling skills in polite society. So we go from Bath to London and it, it just sounds fabulous. So I'm really looking forward to that one. That's the square of sevens. So that was my uh, book tag. Thank you, Kate. And please feel free to join in with the tag. It's five books you've loved recently, four auto by authors, three genres that you enjoyed, two favourite places to read and one book you're looking forward to. I'll see you soon. Bye.